Greetings, me droogs. Today we're going to look at common source FET amplifiers. Very similar in function to a common emitter bipolar amplifier. You're going to see a lot of similarities here. So let's start with a little circuit. All right, so this is our common source amplifier. Like the bipolar case, this is an inverting amplifier. We get voltage gain out of it. Right? Unlike the bipolar, it tends to have a very, very high input impedance, as we shall see. So in other words, what I'm talking about is a circuit, see a, sort of a generic looking circuit, something along this line. All right, so I've got uh, a load resistor out here, a drain resistor, you know, power supply coming off my source. I'm going to put two resistors in here just in case we might want to do some swamping. And so I'll call this our source number one, our source number two. Here's the gate, a uh, little gate resistor back here, RG. And of course, our input signal, right, our VN. We probably don't need a cap because the gate is virtually at ground, but I don't necessarily know what's going on with this circuit, so there might be a DC voltage, so I'll just put a cap in there just to, just to be safe and block it. All right, so what we need to do is come up with a uh, AC equivalent circuit for this, and our first point of order is to replace our FET with its model, and that looks something like this. We have a current source, controlled current source. This value of ID is equal to GM times VGS. And it's got this direction for a positive input. And then hanging off the gate, we have this resistance RGS. And we say, practically speaking, at least at low frequencies, that's infinity. You know, it's not really infinity. It's a really, really big value. but. At least at low frequencies, we can approximate it compared to other resistances in the circuit. We can approximate it as infinity. Okay. All right. Now let's connect everything else up. So off of the gate, we have the gate resistor, the biasing resistor. And of course, caps are going to short out for AC. So here's our input voltage. Off of the FETS source, this cap shorts out the RS2. We're only left with RS1. So I'm just going to call that RS, little RS, AC value of RS, to indicate swapping. And I'm going to draw these two guys separately. Of course, the power supply is an AC ground cap shorts. RD goes to ground as does RL. All right. Okay. So the first thing And we can combine these two guys in parallel. You can call that little RL or little RD, your choice. Right? Um, looking at the impedances, if I was to look at the input impedance, now what do we see over here for a ZN? Well, that's going to be this RG in parallel with the Z end of the gate. But as we said, at least at low frequencies, that's huge, right? That's the nearly infinite value. Now, granted, at high frequencies, the gate capacitance is going to take that number down considerably. But at lower frequencies, uh, this is uh, large enough that we can ignore it. So you can say, well, it's, you know, in parallel with really big, which is basically whatever RG is. So you can get that, that ZN just by sort of inspection. You look at the circuit and go, oh, there's RG. That's my ZN, at least at low frequencies. The Z out's almost the same, really, sort of from a different perspective. You're sitting here at the load looking back this way, and we see a very similar thing to what we saw in the common emitter amplifier. There's RD, and that's in parallel with whatever this impedance is, which is the internal impedance of the current source, but that's going to be a very, very big number again, so it's just approximately whatever the heck RD is. Right? Beautiful. All right. The third one, the big one, is the voltage gain. So voltage gain is always what you get out versus what you put in to get it. So what do we get out? 
Well, given this direction of current, right, that current source is pulling like this. So the polarity of that is plus to minus ground up. So this is going to have an inversion just like we had um, with the common emitter amplifier. The out output phase is 180 degrees out. So that's a negative value. We take that current, we multiply it by this resistance. So if we were to do this as a loaded value, in other words, using little RL, we'd say that output voltage is the current GMVGS times the impedance, which is RL. We're going to divide that by the input value. Well, what's the input? That's two things. That's the gate source voltage plus the drop across the RS. What is the drop across the RS? It's RS times the current through it. In other words, it's GMVGS times RS. Great. I can factor out, factor out the VGS here. All right. And then we can divide through, get rid of that. And again, just works out to a negative GMRL divided by 1 plus GMRS. All right. Now, if we don't have it swamped, RS is 0. This term falls away, and the gain falls to, simplifies to negative GMRL if it's not swamped. All right. So, two of these things you can get just by inspection. You look at the circuit and say, hey, there's my RD, that's my Z out, here's my RG, that's my Z in. And we go through this little computation over here. We have to find GM, just kind of like we found, uh, you know, our prime E in a bipolar, we have to find the GM for this, um, plug it in the form, and then off we go. Right? Okay. So, this would be a good place to actually do a proper example. So let's take um, maybe something a little bit simpler than this. I'll just take a, um, a self-bias like this. But I'm going to forego the whole business with two resistors. We'll deal with that in a separate sort of way. So I'm still going to use a uh, self-bias here. And here is my output. All right, so here's my little single stage amplifier. All right, values. So that's 100 millivolts. We'll put in maybe a mega ohm for the gate resistor. 30 volts for the power supply. 3K for that resistor for the uh, RD value. 12K for the load. And 200 ohms. For the source resistor. All right. Now, as far as the transistor itself is concerned, I'm going to use the same parameters we used in a preceding example. I'm going to say the IDSS, the maximum current is 10 mils. The associated VGS off will be minus 2 volts. From that, we can determine GM0, the maximum transconductance. That's negative 2 IDSS over VGS off. All right. So that's going to be uh, negative 2 times 10 mils, right, 20 mils over the negative 2 volts, so that's just going to equal 10 millisiemens, right? Beautiful. All right. Now, let's do the bias first, see what we have here. So this is a self-bias. There's several ways we could solve this. Um, I'll just use a uh, graphical technique with the self-bias curve. Remember the self-bias curve on the horizontal, that's GM0 times RS. This is the DC biasing value, RS. And on the vertical, we have the ratio of ID to IDSS. And that curve looks something like this. So we'll take our values, right? GM0 times RS. Right, GM0 is 10 millisiemens. RS, the DC biasing resistor, is 200 ohms, 0.2K. So 0.2K times 10 mils, K's mils cancel, 0.2 times 10 is 2. So I'll find 2 on my graph, find out where that is, that's approximately 38%. In other words, ID is roughly 38% of IDSS. So ID 
0.38 times 10 mils would give us 3.8 mils. All right. Let's do a little sanity check on our circuit over here, see if we have reasonable values. Knowing that current, I can find the drop across that resistor, All right, just using Ohm's law. So the drop across our D would have to be 3.8 mils times the 3K. All right, K's mils cancel, it's 3 times 3.8, that gets us 11.4 volts. If we subtract that from the power supply, right, that'll give us the drain to ground voltage, V sub D. So that's 30 volts minus 11.4 volts, and we're looking at 18.6 volts for the drain to ground voltage. Okay, so those are sensible values, right? Those, those don't look crazy at all. You know, we're not, not getting like a, a drain voltage that's bigger than the power supply or that's, uh, you know, a negative voltage or something like that. So that's a nice sanity check. Okay, moving over to the um, AC analysis part of it. We're going to need GM. One of the formulas we came up with for GM is that GM is equal to GM0, the maximum value, times the square root of ID over IDSS, you know, which conveniently we pulled off of the graph. That's one reason I like to use this graph. You get that value immediately from the graph. So we can just plug numbers in here. 10 millisiemens times the square root of 0.38. Okay. GM is going to work out to 6.16 millisiemens. Beautiful. All right, now we shift gears here a little bit, which requires a new pen. Let's get the input and output impedances out of the way. Like I said, we can do that pretty much by inspection. What are we looking at? Well, the ZN, we're sitting out here, we're looking in this way, we see the 1 meg. From the output, looking back this way, for the output impedance, um, we just see the 3K. Okay, two-thirds there. Now, got to find the gain. We could find the gain loaded, right, the loaded gain using the, um, the little RL, which in this case, little RL is 3K in parallel with 12K. And that works out to 2.4K. So if I find the, uh, the loaded gain, this is not swamped, right? These caps short. So the 200 ohm, it's out of there. It's gone, all right? So our gain falls back to this. Just the negative GM times RL. So that's a negative 6.16. Times the 2.4k. Right. So with the negative, multiply this out, we get 14.8. Now remember, the minus sign just tells you you have a phase inversion. So if the input phase, right, if your V in looks like this, then your V out is just flipped upside down. Right? It's bigger, but it's flipped upside down. 180 degree phase shift. Right. That's all the minus sign tells us. Just like in the bipolar case. Right? We could also do this in the unloaded version where we sort of ignore the 12K. In other words, if we're going to swap out a whole bunch of different values here, it's, it's more convenient for us to just def, um, define what the uh, unloaded gain is, and then we can do a little voltage divider to determine how much signal is actually matched over to the load. So in the unloaded case, right, to find the unloaded AV, um, same equation but the RL is just 3K. And that's going to work out to 18.5. Right, so that's if we had nothing out here, like you just had a scope, for example. So to figure out what we have for a 12K, we have to do a little divider. If I did a source conversion back here, I'd have a voltage source with a series 3K with the 12K, right? So your divider is going to be 12K over 3K plus 12K. 
which is 0.8. And if I multiply 0.8 times the negative 18.5, surprise, 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 you will get a negative 14.8. Right, so we put 100 millivolts in, we expect to see 14.8 times that at the output. Right? In other words, 1.48 volts peak, if that was 100 millivolts peak coming in. It. Okay? All right. Last thing. Swapping. Well, if we pull this capacitor, right, just rip it out of there, the 200 ohm now becomes a swapping resistor, in which case we would use the general formula over here. So we'd have a negative GM uh, 6.16. Right. Doing, doing this is a loaded value, just to compare it up quick. Um, the loaded value is 2.4K. And it's going to be 1 plus GMRS. What's the RS value? That's 200 ohms now. Remember, that's the AC value, right? When we did this, the RS was 200 because, you know, the, the cap is open for DC. That's capital RS. This is little RS, the AC value. Initially, the cap made that go to zero. Now, without the cap, the AC and DC values are the same. Um, computing this, we get 6.62, right? So the gain has gone down, or it's gone down from um, nearly 15 to, you know, 6.6 .6 basically. And ideally this would be a little bit uh, better in terms of the distortion characteristic. Okay? So there's our problem. It's completely solved. Madrugs.